Thank you for joining us this evening. Welcome to the 2022 State of the District Address for Seattle Public Schools. Before we begin, Seattle Public Schools acknowledges that we are on the ancestral lands and traditional territories of the Puget Sound Coast Salish people. It is also particularly important to acknowledge the souls and lives of black and brown people who have contributed to the founding wealth and development of our country. These acknowledgments are the start and not a replacement for authentic relationships and engagement with the diverse voices of our beloved community. Thank you for consistently challenging the status quo and pushing each of us to be better. SPS is committed to dismantling systemic racism and discrimination in spaces of our work, particularly for those who are furthest from educational justice. I invite you to work with us to create change. At this time, it is my great honor to introduce the mayor of the city of Seattle. We could not ask for a better friend and champion for our schools and our community than our current mayor, a son of Seattle who reflects Seattle's history and who sees the promise of Seattle's future. Please join me in welcoming Seattle's 57th mayor, the Honorable Bruce Harrell. We're on a first name basis here. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Let's dispense with some of the formalities because this is an exciting day and while it is for a formal day, uh, let's informalize it a little bit because we're celebrating in the spirit of a family, in the spirit of a Seattle Public School family. Um, here's my speech <laughs> because when you're dealing with family, you just need a few bullet points that you want to make. It's absolutely my pleasure to introduce Dr. Brent Jones. And I know that um, he, is, he has a great opportunity in front of him, but he's prepared a lifetime for this. So I want to start off by, first of all, thanking the board for your, your courage. Uh, yes, process has its place. Uh, I was born and raised in Seattle. I know Seattle process a little bit. <laughs> but you were elected to lead and you're elected to use all of your life skills, your personal experiences, your, your acumen, all the wisdom that you possess, and make bold decisions. And that's what you did in hiring such a brilliant educator and leader. So I commend you. Um, at some point, as I say, process has its place, has its place in, our, in how we do things. But there's always room for brilliant leadership, and I think that's what you displayed in your decision. So let's just take a moment and applaud the decision that the school board made. And we all know, as I introduced Dr. Jones, that about his background and his, his educational background and his growing up and being a Seattle native and all of that, we've read about it. Uh, I want to share a little bit more about his personal story because I think it is critical. His love for our teachers and our administrators and, and our nurses and those who make the whole systems go. You know, his mother was an educator. His father did uh, Mona Jones. His father did diversity planning back in the 1960s and 1970s. And don't act like some of you weren't around then like me, because I was around. You're not all millennials. <laughs> he, he came from good stock. And I say this in a world of knowing institutional racism and historical racism, that he and I were very privileged. We were privileged. I had a mom and dad that went to Garfield High School. I have kids who went to uh, the Seattle Public Schools, as did I. It produced a mayor, right? Uh, his, his mom and dad, who've been married almost 60 years, if, if I'm not mistaken, close to 60 years, they poured love into him, poured a belief into him. We invest in pre-K because we realize now that we are walking adults that just didn't have a, a fair start, a fair chance. Our, our investment in, with you as partners in our pre-K world is because we want, we want to drive equity. Uh, in what we do. You are going to be our strongest partners in doing this. So Dr. Jones came from a story. Now he's in a position of power, a position of privilege. And one thing I know about Brent, and yes, full disclosure, I've known him for nearly 40 years. Uh, he and I have uh, a friendship that dates back. And I will tell you that even when we were young folks and he had a full head of hair, <laughs> 
big afro. No, he never did the big afro. <laughs> that we talked about equity, about educational excellence, about always reaching back and helping other people. We joined a fraternity together. Uh, the same fraternity that uh, Board President Hersey belongs to. We, we talked about academic excellence. It is our obligation to make sure that we drive equity through all boats rising. He, he doesn't whine a lot. He doesn't make excuses. I, I know the personal loss he had just a couple of years ago, uh, his dear sister, uh, sister Dana uh, Jones Walker, the, the loss that he had. And through that, he had to still raise their beautiful child, Nia, who's a freshman at Loyola Marymount. He had to hold his own mother and father up in strength. And at the same time, loving this institution we call the Seattle Public Schools. That is the leader we have. A brilliant decision. And the beauty, I'm being a little selfish here, is that the stuff he and I could do, making sure the city council and the board and the mayor and the superintendent, we come together for the benefit of our students, our teachers, our administrators, our nurses, our counselors. As I said, process has its place, but a call to say, how are you today? Let's make some magic together. 2022, when we come out of this together, family, when we come out of this together, and not take things for granted, we lost people we love, we come out realizing that we will fight against race and social justice on a pathway toward commonality. Commonality, what we have in common. We want the best for our children. So with that, I'm absolutely honored to work with the school board and to our leader, Dr. Brent Jones. Dr. Jones. I certainly don't deserve that, but thank you, Mayor Harrell, for such a generous introduction as well as your staunch support and partnership. Uh, couldn't have a stronger leader at the mayor's office. Thank you so much. I also want to acknowledge the Seattle Public School Board directors for your continued leadership and support of students as well. And before we begin, please allow me to thank my wife, Dr. Janine Jones, for her presence tonight. So we have several special guests here tonight, uh, the Honorable Mayor Harrell, Dr. Dwayne Chappelle of the City of Seattle's Department of Education and Early Learning. We have SPD Chief Diaz, we have Senator Saldana, representatives from uh, Jayapal, Governor Inslee's offices. We have representatives from Senator Patty Murray's office. We have Rachel Smith here, CEO of the Seattle Chamber of Commerce. We also have Ms. Lisa Chick, Executive Director for the Alliance of Education and we have our valued comrades from the Seattle Council PTSA. And, more, and, and equally as important, I have my entire senior leadership team here and some of our brilliant principals. With that, I say thank you for being here today. I also want to invite our valuable students, families, educators, building and administrative leaders, civic dignitaries, business and community-based partners, and Seattle King County residents into this shared space this evening. You have been beside us every step of the way, making this school year a reality. Tonight is dedicated to your hard work, collaboration, and helpful feedback. As Mayor Harrell talked about, Seattle school success is deeply personal to me. And this evening, I am humbled but excited to stand before you as the newly appointed superintendent of Seattle Public Schools. Thank you for your faith in me. I'm honored and I promise to serve this district and our community with the best interests of our students, leading with my words and my actions. As many of you know, Seattle SPS is part of my legacy. I'm from Seattle, where my mother taught in SPS. I also went to school here during desegregation, and I'm a proud graduate of, drum roll please, <laughs> Franklin High School, go Quakers. 
I have worked at SPS leading human resources and again in equity, partnerships, engagement, strategy, prior to answering the call to lead our great public schools in May of 2021. And last spring, I had the honor of watching my daughter graduate from Cleveland High School. So this journey in Seattle's success, again, is deeply personal to me. Let me be clear, the last several months have not been easy for our students and families. And like you, I've hoped to start this school year with the pandemic in our rearview mirror. Our focus was to be solely on 180 days of excellence with our students of color for this educational justice at the core of our efforts. Our commitment to Seattle excellence was once again tested as we moved through Delta and into the Omicron variant of COVID-19. However, the continued resilience of our school leaders, educators, students, and families have made this school possible, this school year possible and extremely rewarding. On September 1st, with joy and excitement, we welcomed back students to school where they learn best. We kept schools open by operating as both educational and public health agencies. Educators continuously adapted to remote, hybrid, concurrent instruction, and together, we have invested over $50 million on COVID mitigation. We've served more than 13,500 stu students with our vaccination clinics. We've established that 79% of SPS students are fully vaccinated, and we've administered more than 35,000 COVID tests in our schools, something that we can be proud of. Since the start of the school year, SPS has supported students and schools to readjust. Educators and school leaders continue to be extremely innovative in how they overcome new challenges to classroom engagement with students for which the last two years have been extremely challenging. Now, despite these Herculean hurdles, we must remind ourselves that great things continue to be accomplished in Seattle Public Schools. We are excited about the prognosis of a healthier future for Seattle, and we're poised to turn to a brighter day. And as we step into our long-awaited future, Seattle Public Schools sits at a crossroads. We must leverage this momentum and the lessons learned while emerging from a pandemic shutdown, racial reckoning, and ongoing uncertainty to reimagine and revolutionize education in Seattle to remain this innovative and progressive city. First, let me tell you where Seattle Public Schools is strong. At SPS, we do teaching and learning well. Our ninth grade students are on track for graduation with completion rates increasing from 85% to 92% over the last three years. We've seen a 19% increase between 2020 and 2021 in SPS graduates taking advantage of Seattle Promise Program. SPS now welcomes 1,300 preschoolers in 66 classrooms, including 100 preschoolers with disabilities. Seattle Public School students are at or above the state average in advanced coursework, including STEM, IB, and advanced placement courses. And our graduation rates for students, including African-American students and students further from educational justice, continue to improve. Now let me show you what the joy of learning looks like at Rainier View Elementary School. As principal, I am most proud of our longitudinal success with student achievement gains at Rainier View Elementary and honored of being named a state ESEA distinguished school. When the light bulb comes on for learners, one of the first noticings that we take is the pride, is the uh, sense of accomplishment, is the joy within the teaching and learning uh, process. Vision and mission is centered on all students, meeting all students at their individual level of need with great care. What fills my cup as an educator, as a principal within Seattle Public Schools, are the families we serve, the community, the teachers, and most importantly, the children. We also have openly committed to stand strongly in the gap for those students with the least power and have suffered the worst injustices. We have a strategic plan to build a system that works for our black boys and teens. We've established goals and guardrails that compel us to cultivate systems, structures, and behaviors that yield justice and promote community. 
Seattle Public Schools has vowed to prepare students of color for this educational justice, as well as every student, until they are college, career, and life ready. Our strategic plan lays out three academic goals. The first builds literacy skills by third grade. Students at Wing Luke Elementary recently shared their reading journey with us. My path in the education started with the birth of my son, who is uh, 25 years old as of now. So 25 years ago, um, his godmother gave me a book called The uh, Fourth Grade Failure Syndrome. By the time they hit fourth grade, they're not, uh, if they're not hitting their reading levels, then they have difficulties learning. That transcends in the issues into middle school, into high school, and then into adult life. I just made it a point because um, of the children that I'm servicing to make sure that they had books and materials that spoke to them. They had characters on the front cover that looked like them. They had characters inside of the, the story that were like them, that had things that, that were in common with them. And so uh, once children started getting into those books, what I started noticing is that they were really invested into the story because the stories really spoke to them. I like, what I like most about reading is like, like where the, the book takes place and the author puts like a lot of effort into like each chapter. I can use like my imagination to see the situation in my point of view and like in my head to think about it. In first and second grade, um, that's when I really started noticing books and at first I was just like, oh, they're boring. But then in third grade, I really got to like um, read books and spend time with books. When I got into like reading the words, I actually understand it better because you know pictures are pictures and like I didn't really understand them that good. But when I got into words and I, like we were just talking about putting a movie in our mind, that's when I started understanding it more. And I liked uh, reading books more. Reading skills in third grade sets up students for success in middle school where increasingly complicated math requires strong literacy. Our strategic plan calls for strengthening math school skills by seventh grade as demonstrated at Aki Karosi Middle School. As a school institution, students are unfortunately tracked and once you get in that track, it's hard to get out of it. So here we're trying to disrupt the track and make sure that you have any opportunity that you want to, to succeed. So as a middle-aged white teacher, which is the predominant um, kind of number of teachers in education, um, what does what does my experience, uh, how does that differ from my students' experience? Um, and so making sure I'm understanding and looking at like my implicit bias, they have everything inside of them to be successful. I just have to find those strengths and make sure they highlight it. And so when I'm thinking about teaching math at Aki and at seventh grade, I'm making sure that I find for every single student, what is their strength? How can I help support that? And how can I let them be the leader in the class with that? The third academic goal is ensuring SPS graduates are college and career ready. And these strong math skills in middle school that Ms. Wendy Miller was talking about prepare, prepare students for rigorous coursework in high school. And with a strong high school career, our students, like those at Rainier Beach High School, are Seattle ready for what lays ahead. I just had two students in my office that were talking to me about going to historically black universe, universities. One got accepted to Clark Atlanta, the other one got accepted to Morehouse, the other student was considering going to Jackson State University where I graduated, and uh, he was also considering going to Grambling State University. I mean, those are f great conversations. That's how I'm spending my day. Senior year, that was a huge, um, that was one of my main priorities is to have a bunch of options. I'm just a person again like I want to spread the horizon, spread you know however many opportunities I have so you know I, I got I got into a couple about eight so far um, so <laughs> uh, so that's that is a quite quite a few options so I do feel comfortable where I'm at right now so I feel good that the, the work has really paid off for me. Our mission is compelling our strategy is clear we are building an anti-racist educational system that will move black boys and teens to proficiency in third grade reading, in seventh grade math, and graduating ready for Seattle or Howard or Harvard. 
To speak personally about this, I was that young man many years ago. And today, many of your, these young students are those young men we're fighting for today. Here's how we're going to do that. We have promised to provide safe and welcoming learning environments for students and staff, hire and retain and develop teachers of color and educational allies, provide professional development that cultivates educators' belief in every child's capacity to succeed. We will train educators in effective research-based literacy and numeracy teaching models. And we will expand the time that we invest in teaching and support of African-American males entering into seventh grade. And last but not least, we will foster inclusive, authentic engagement with families because research tells us repeatedly that the strongest educator of academic success is family engagement in a student's education. Now, we have also invested in school-based efforts to support our students' cultural identity and challenge our students with academic rigor, cultivating their competence and their confidence. In addition, we have regalvanized critical conversations with our elected business, organizational, and civic leaders. We have pledged to wrap our arms around our students, family, and staff in tangible ways that reinforce their value, safety, and worth in our schools and in our neighborhoods. We believe that if we can intentionally target our support to reach all the way to those who need it most, it will result in universal success in literacy, math, and college and career readiness for all SPS students. The leadership at Nathan Hale High School understands the value of targeted universalism. What our district and what we believe in as well, that's the targeted universal approach. If we focus on ninth grade African American male achievement in Algebra 1, this is narrowing our focus. Every single student will benefit from having a connection to Algebra 1. That means every single student will have a connection to math. Every single student will have an academic identity to uh, math, which then can eliminate barriers if they choose to go to college. If we have a strong culture and mentorship and in clubs and activities that are focused on African-American males, if we center our work and our budget decisions, uh, centering our master schedule, our budget priorities, our, our building leadership team or Senate, decisions on African-American males, it's going to benefit every student because we are centering the students furthest from educational justice. So ultimately, that's the justice-centered decision which will uh, specifically benefit everyone. Now is the time to move from planning into actions that are steeped in justice, love, and progress. I want to challenge our school community and supporters to join SPS at the partnership table. As a community, let us take on the challenge of improving systems inside the district and supporting our students outside the school walls. Let's create a holistic environment with highly favorable conditions for our students to thrive. Let's align the systems inside and outside of Seattle Public Schools to really support the success of Seattle students. Seattle Public Schools is not only my legacy, but yours as well. The continued success of our schools is inextricably tied to the success of our mayor's goal for achieving one Seattle. In the coming months, you will find SPS leaders and staff hard at work in the following ways. We will be working alongside Seattle School Board to implement a governance structure that puts students and student outcomes at the center of every conversation and every decision. We will be investing our time, talent, and treasure in third grade reading, seventh grade math, and college and career readiness. We are graduating students who are going to show the world what Seattle ready really means. We are renewing our partnerships with the city of Seattle, including the mayor's office, the Department of Education and Early Learning, the Seattle Police Department, and the Seattle business community, like our partners at the Chamber of Commerce, and higher education partners at Seattle Colleges, University of Washington, Seattle University, and others. We are exhibiting fiscal responsibility and fulfilling the work of our newly passed levies Nearly 80% of our community, Seattle voters, said yes to school levies for our long-term sustainability. 
Your faith and confidence in schools was resounding and we will fulfill our promises. Mayor Harrell is working with us to take students from preschool to Seattle Promise. The city of Seattle is supporting this shared mission with the passage of the Families Education Preschool and Promise Levy and the most recent capital and operating levies. Our partnership epitomizes the one Seattle vision that I hold for our entire city. Along with Dr. Brent Jones, we are going to make sure Seattle students receive the support they need coming out of this pandemic. My administration joins, joins you to ensure that Seattle Public School graduates students are Seattle ready, equipped with the tools they need to thrive in our changing economy. We have to start early, which is why our nationally recognized Seattle preschool program will serve 2,100 students this year, our youngest learners. Now that's 125 more seats than last year. Most Seattle family families qualify for free tuition and more than three quarters of the preschool program are students of color. We're proud of this work we're doing together. And with Seattle Promise, high school graduates have a pathway to college. The city is in close collaboration and partnership with the Seattle Public Schools, Seattle Colleges, and the University of Washington. The Promise works. Between 2020 and 2021, Seattle Public School graduates taking advantage of Seattle's Promise program grew by almost 20%. The city of Seattle is proud to be part of the Seattle Public School District's path towards excellence and creating the conditions for all students to thrive. Let us do what is best for our young people. Let us become even more of a devoted public school city, a sacred place where the business and civic community and SPS are in covenant together to surround our students with cultural support, physical and emotional safety, high expectations, and endless opportunities. Thank you for always believing in Seattle Public Schools and our students. Because of your support, we are poised to finish this year strong to better serve a new generation of SPS students who will graduate college, career, and life ready. We must make each school day and each school year count. Our students, particularly our students of color furthest from educational justice, need us more now than ever before. I believe that together we can ensure that they succeed. Thank you for your time this evening and be well.